Hello and welcome to the second pre-alpha preview of Time Fight Zone. We're continuing to flesh out a simple prototype for the first level, and we're getting pretty close to having something resembling an actual game. Since the last video, we've added a machine gun to the game. The visual model is another placeholder from the old low-poly art style, but it gets the idea across. The machine gun is a pretty interesting contrast to the shotgun. Aside from the obvious differences, the recoil feels a lot different. With the shotgun, your movement is only affected for a moment when you fire. Even if you hold down the fire button constantly, you'll only have to deal with recoil pushing you back about 10% of the time. The machine gun, however, is constantly pushing you back. This means that running forward while firing severely cripples your movement speed, and shooting enemies while near a ledge requires constant attention to maintain your position and not fall off. With the addition of the machine gun, we had to address accuracy in a more meaningful way. With the shotgun, you simply shoot a spread of shots. It's pretty simple. The machine gun, however, required more thought. The three general schools of thought on accuracy are pinpoint accuracy, in which your weapon shoots exactly where your crosshair is pointing with no variance. Then there's fixed accuracy, in which your weapon has an accuracy stat, which slightly randomizes the shot's trajectory for each bullet. Finally, there's dynamic accuracy, which works the same as fixed accuracy, but the extent to which your bullet's trajectory is randomized is affected by your movement speed and how long you've been firing for. We initially leaned towards pinpoint accuracy, as it's what most classic FPS games do, and that's definitely the style we're going for. However, we don't want to fall into the trap of implementing mechanics just because that's how it's done. So we gave it some more thought. We decided on what we believe to be a relatively unique implementation of dynamic accuracy. Each gun has a stat that will determine how much its accuracy is affected by movement. The shotgun is completely unaffected by movement, as it already has a really high spread and lends itself more to run and gun style gameplay. The machine gun has very good accuracy when the player is standing still, but is affected by the player movement to a moderate degree. As I mentioned before, generally dynamic accuracy in games usually causes accuracy to get worse when the player moves, as well as the more rapidly the player shoots. Holding down the firing button will generally result in increasingly poor accuracy. However, in Time Fight Zone, since shooting causes you to move anyway, and movement causes a drop in accuracy, we decided to have accuracy penalties come purely from movement speed. This has some interesting, if not predictable, effects. You can back yourself against a wall to remove your accuracy penalty completely. This slightly raises the skill ceiling as skill players can position themselves carefully to unload on enemies from a distance without accuracy concerns. Crouching, which dampens all your movement speeds, including weapon pushback, now also comes with intrinsic accuracy benefits, without having to hard code a boring accuracy boost for crouching. We're trying to tie everything into the movement in Time Fight Zone to make an interesting and elegant series of systems. Rather than implementing a bunch of separate mechanics that affect each other in predetermined, hard-coded ways, we want to have the movement system be a center of reality that makes the mechanics intuitive. Continuing on this thread of logic, taking damage also moves the player. This makes taking damage very easy to notice, and you can immediately tell what direction the damage came from based on the direction you were moved in. It also causes an intrinsic accuracy penalty for taking damage. It's important that the player always know that they're taking damage, so in addition to being pushed away, the subtle film grain effect becomes more apparent and is tinted red, and a sound plays. The effect could use some more polish, but it'll do for now. The most immediately obvious visual change since the last video is the HUD. The only really interesting thing on the HUD is the crosshair, which changes color based on the health of the enemy you're aiming at. We always loved this in Serious Sam and never understood why it wasn't a more common practice. Initially, we calculated the color dynamically based on the exact amount of health the enemy had, resulting in varying shades of green, orangish, and red, like the player's health bar. This was cool, but it didn't look very good and wasn't as satisfying as the big jumps in color you see now. Having only three possible colors, green, yellow, and red, representing nearly full, about half, and low health respectively, makes dealing damage a lot more satisfying for reasons unknown to science. The HUD's implementation brings to light a mechanic we haven't talked about yet, armor. You take armor percent of your health when you take damage. This means if you have 100 armor, you take no damage, and if you have 50 armor, you take half damage, and the full value of the damage is taken out of your armor supply. The last big interesting thing we added is a turret. Every level will have some sort of turret variant in Time Fight Zone. For our crypt test level, the turret is a gargoyle. The purpose of turrets is to keep the player on their toes. The player is always moving very fast, running from room to room without much thought. The enemy encounters are pretty fun and interesting, but we needed something to spice up the times when the player is just moving through the level. Turret encounters are very different from normal enemy encounters. With an enemy encounter, you'll generally want to execute some sort of movement pattern that counteracts the enemy's attacks while simultaneously shooting at it. You'll jump over a sweeping laser, back away from a melee enemy, sidestep an enemy shooting straight at you, etc. Turret encounters are vastly different from anything you'll experience with a traditional enemy. Turrets show up on walls just above the height of the player. They look back and forth to scan the area they're placed in. 
If they see a player, they'll execute a short windup and start shooting a barrage of nearly unavoidable shots. The only surefire way to avoid them is preemptive caution. You need to peek into an area before entering it to make sure there's no turrets. If there is a turret, you need to shoot it carefully from a distance. If it sees you, you'll have to go back into cover and wait until it loses interest, then resume your attack. This popping into and out of cover provides a stark contrast to the running and jumping of the enemy encounters, and makes moving through the environment much more interesting. That's pretty much it for big interesting things, but there's a few other small changes we made as well. We changed the method by which we outline objects. Before, we used a shader to draw every object twice, once normally and once slightly larger and in all black. We then forced the black one to render behind the regular one for a nice outline effect. This doesn't work well for some objects though, especially those with sharp angles. We now use a post-processing effect that runs after all the objects are rendered. It looks at all the objects the camera can see and uses the angles of the polygons relative to the camera to draw outlines. If one part of an object is almost parallel to the camera and the next part is nearly perpendicular, odds are there's an edge. This post effect detects that and uses it to draw outlines over the rendered image. This looks much better and works in more situations than the old technique. Thanks for watching. To keep up to date on the game, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right here, or check out our website at CodeAvarice.com. You can find us on Twitter at CodeAvarice, follow the artist responsible for all the pretty stuff at Velissa3x3x3, and myself at SpruderW.